Welcome back to my ministry. I am your host, Nurse uh, Lois. Um, today's a video, um, or this particular video, is going to be uh, focused on Hades, um, some experiences that people who were connected to me experienced um, about going uh, to Hades, my experience has been uh, going to heaven, but God gave me a vision um, of Hades. So I am going to um, first tell you that um, God has blessed me with um, a lot of wonderful, wonderful pastors um, in my walk uh, with the Lord. Um, one of my pastors has had a pastor um, by the name of Kenneth uh, Hagen. And um, Kenneth Hagen has gone on to be uh, with the Lord, but Kenneth Hagen used to come into our church, um, you know, quite frequently. And he has a very powerful testimony about um, being born with a congenital uh, heart disease. And how as a teenager, he hadn't given his heart uh, to the Lord. And as he was dying on his deathbed, um, you know, his grandmother knew that if her grandson died, he would spend eternity in hell because he hadn't accepted the Lord Jesus into his heart. And so just like any prayer or mama would do or any praying grandmama uh, will do because I'm a product of a praying grandmama, okay? Just like any praying grandmama would do, they're not going to give up on a seed, okay? Don't care how it looked like, what it looked like. I mean, Kenneth Hagen was like dying. He was literally dying, okay? And his spirit left his body, uh, a couple of times. Now, Kenneth Pagan shared this um, at our church, you know, many times. And um, you might be able to Google that testimony and hear it for yourself. But he said as he was dying and his spirit left his body, his spirit went down to Hades. Okay. Um, and another interpretation of the Bible calls it Sheol. Okay. Um, and when he went down there, he smelt the stench of hell. He saw the torture of hell. He saw the flames of hell. He saw the everlasting torture that's in hell for all those, all those who rejected Christ and for people who received Christ but rejected living holy before the Lord in the earth. Okay. So, yeah, if, if you have Jesus in your heart and you feel with the precious Holy Ghost, y'all, we can't play. We got to do this thing right. We supposed to be practicing, walking with God on the earth right now. If you stumble and you fall, get your hind parts up. Tell God you're sorry. Ask God to help you live right. Turn from wickedness. Turn from sin. I don't care what these darn celebrities are saying on TV. I don't care because some of them up there talking about Jesus and they live in foul. Don't listen to that garbage. They'll send you to Hades, okay? And you be down there suffering off listening to that bull crap. Y'all better listen to the word of the living God. God clearly tells you, many shall say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done many miracles in thy name? And the Lord will say, depart from me, ye who work iniquity. Anyone who's practicing sin and you're doing it habitually and you know better. You ain't going to make it in. You better learn how to fast and pray and keep your flesh under control and make decisions to walk upright and to walk holy before your God. And holiness ain't got nothing to do with what you got on. It has everything to do with what you doing on the inside of your spirit and how you living. Okay? Um, 
Some people just don't have the right clothes to wear. They keep walking with the Lord. God will bless their finances. Their clothes will change. Stop judging people based on what they look like on the outside. God is looking at the heart, okay? You just keep watching people. People will grow. People will grow in the Lord. The more word people get, the more they change, okay? The other thing is, Kenneth Hagin said his grandmother was right there as he was dying. And she just would not. She refused to let that, her grandson just live in hell. She kept praying his spirit back into his body. Okay? Grandmama knew the Lord. Grandmama knew that she had power and authority and dominion over death. Grandmama wasn't playing. She said her, so her grandson is not going to spend eternity in hell. Okay? She kept commanding his spirit to come back into his body and, and, and asking God to for a miracle for her grandson to accept the Lord Jesus. So I think this happened. I think Kenneth Copeland, not Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen said this happened a couple of times. And then, you know, it scared, scared the mess out of him. That's what it did. Scared him straight. Okay. That man got back up in his spirit because his grandma was praying. That man asked, asked Jesus in his heart, okay? That man did not want to go there, okay? It's a real place, y'all. It's a real place. And so, you know, Kenneth Hagin said that uh, God began to work on his body. He began to learn how to walk with the Lord. He began to read the Bible every day. And he told us at our church several times that God was God was healing his, his heart, doing a miracle with his heart, but God showed him how to read the word of God every day to keep his heart beating right. That's a word for somebody. Whether you got a heart disease, a kidney disease, a liver disease, whatever going on inside, God instructed Kenneth Hagen to open up the Bible and to read it every day because there's power in the word of God. The word of God is life. It's filled with power. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's alive. I shared my testimony about going to heaven, what God showed me in heaven, how alive the word of God is. It's the word of God has like a, it has a heartbeat. It's so alive. And when you pick it up and read it every day, it'll make your heart beat properly. It'll make your kidneys function properly. It'll make your liver fix, uh, uh, function properly. It'll make your brain function properly. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You can't live just on bread alone. You gotta, you gotta also live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You gotta eat right and pick up the Bible, the holy text, and read it because life is in the word. Healing is in the word. Miracles are in the word. Deliverance is in the word. You're supposed to be close, walking close with God in his word every day. The Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. Do you understand me? So, yeah. So, you know, I've heard this testimony before with Kenneth, Col uh, Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth Hagen. H-A-G-I-N. Okay? And, um... You know, I'm used to hearing those testimonies because I'm used to being around the saints of God who would share those testimonies. There was another woman of God by the name of Evangelist Simona Hall. That woman of God was the first woman who uh, taught me when I was, oh my goodness, y'all, I was like in my early 20s. She introduced me to Creative Miracle. She talked about how God put gold crosses in her teeth. And how the saints of God have to learn how to believe for creative miracles. Uh, because there might be a time where you need a creative miracle and you can't reach your pastor. You can't reach your first lady. You can't reach your prayer warrior. Then what you going to do? You got to learn how to believe God for yourself. And she talked about creative miracles at a storefront church here in Michigan. Oh my goodness, y'all. Almost 30 years ago. Okay. And I remember listening intently to that woman of God. And she said God placed gold crosses in her teeth because she wanted to see that God created those type of miracles. God had put, he put them in her teeth. And she told us all in the church that we can go up 
and and she will open up her mouth so that we can see it so you know that woman a guy flowed in in uh the gifts of the spirit like i do you know i flow in them gifts of the spirit where i can hear in the realm of the spirit so if you in front of me and you think some kind of crazy thought or the thought is foul or whatever you know the holy ghost will let me hear it in the realm of the spirit and so we all sitting in the church and people was thinking crazy thoughts they was like yeah sure uh you got gold crosses in your teeth so she rebuked it she said i heard that i heard exactly what you said and she called it out in the church and she said if you don't believe me you come on up here and i open my mouth so you can see what god did i mean that woman of god was not playing i was blessed y'all i was so blessed to be around the cream of the crop people who knew god for real for real and i here i am coming into creative miracles hearing messages like that in my early 20s y'all god had me around creative miracles now i understand why because it's a part of my ministry and he was preparing me for creative miracles through the healing ministry as well so yeah so i'm sitting here and i'm listening to all of that i remember coming home i was married at the time and you know when you're married you tell stuff to your spouse and i and I told my spouse, you know, at the time, you know, what the message was about. He thought I had lost my mind. He was like, girl, what kind of church services you going to? And he made fun of me. He went outside. He was talking bad, bad about me with some of the neighbors. Talking about, I think she done lost her mind with all this church stuff. And so I just, you know whatever you know had a little stank attitude and it was kind of shocked that he had that kind of attitude uh with me uh, about me you know his wife and um I, but i was still fascinated i was still fascinated that god could do that and i remember going into the bathroom y'all i asked the lord i said god if this woman evangelist simone hall is lying to me i want you to tell me the truth but if she's telling me the truth show me that you put gold crosses in people's teeth and I want you to do it to my teeth. And y'all, I opened up my mouth. I pointed to one of my teeth in the back. I felt the Holy Ghost come out my first finger right here. He went into, the power of God went into my teeth in the back, at the top, at the bottom, at the top and the bottom on both sides of my teeth. I felt a drilling like I was at the dentist's office. And um, I screamed and I shut my mouth and I heard God say, open up your mouth and the drilling continued and then it stopped. Then God said, go get a flashlight. I went and got a flashlight, looked inside of my teeth at the bottom and at the top. Y'all, I had gold crosses in my teeth. I shouted. I was praising God in my bathroom. I said, God, that woman of God was telling me the truth. And Holy Ghost, I know you inside of me because I felt you come out my finger and go right directly into my teeth. Father, I thank you that you do do creative miracles. And when God did that with me, with Lois Michelle Banks, it broke down every thought that I had in my mind of what God could do or what he can't do. You know, when God is inside of us, he can come out of us and perform all types of miracles. Oh yes, he can. And yesterday I put up a message. I said, um, only God can do it. God can do anything but fail. Do you believe? Do you believe? I thank God for the women and men of God that God placed in my life to plant those precious seeds of faith inside of me because to this day, I believe God can do anything. Y'all, y'all give me something to pray for. I'm, I believe God can do it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that happened to me. I shared that testimony in a book that I wrote, uh, wrote entitled Walking with God. If you want a copy of the book, you can go out to my website at www.nurselois.com and get a hand copy, or you can get the ebook copy. The ebook is only, I think it's like $5 uh, for the ebook. You can download it on your computer and look at all the different testimonies and all the different miracles that God has done uh, in my life. 
because God asked me to share my walk with the world. So I obeyed him and I did it. So yeah, so getting back to Hades, okay? So, you know, I've experienced heaven. I know what heaven looks like. I, I know that's a real place, but God showed me in a vision Hades. He showed me in a vision Hades. I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay, we there was a, a neighbor, a male neighbor that we had in the neighborhood. Uh, he was like the... Uh, the... Uh, a, like a handyman, okay? We, everybody in the neighborhood has known him for years, okay? He used to, uh, you know, he'll help you with anything. Paint your house, help you with take trash to the curb. I mean, you know, he did stuff like that, right? Everybody knew who he was, okay? Listen, something tragic happened to this man, right? I ain't even gonna go into no details because it was so horrible, it happened to one of the uh, neighbors uh, on my block and their family. Something so hideous happened to this man. So foul that I can't even talk about it. It was so bad. Uh, people's hearts have waxed cold, y'all. Uh, I stayed to myself, you know. I mind my own business because folks... Hearts ain't right, okay? But something happened to this uh, neighbor. He ended up in the hospital. God put it on my heart to go visit him at the hospital and uh, to pray for him. So, you know, I would, you know, I obey God. Whenever any of my neighbors were in the hospital, God would put in my heart, you go, you go pray for your neighbors. So I went, you know, I would go physically and pray for my neighbors. Okay. I would pray with for them at home, but I would also go and pray for my neighbors, you know, and I can remember, um, uh, he, he went through the hospital part and, you know, he was released to like, what do you call it? Like it wasn't a halfway house, but it was a it was like a house that people are released to where, you know, cause well, it was a house that he was released to. I don't even I can't even think of the name of the type of house he was released to, but it wasn't into the house where he was staying. Okay. He was staying with his mom at the time, but he was released to a different location, okay. So God put my heart, go visit him at this different location. Witness the name of the Lord Jesus to him and uh, invite him to church. And so, you know, I obey God because I knew this person. I've been knowing this person for years because I've been in the neighborhood for over 30 years. Okay. And so uh, the person went to church with me. At my church a couple times. And then, you know, he hadn't gone to church after that. Not at least with me. And so some years had passed by. And uh, he had gotten off into some kind of street drugs. Okay. Gotten off into some street drugs. He got a hold of some bad drugs. And whatever was out here in these streets was laced with something that affected his heart. It wasn't just affecting his heart. It was affecting everybody who was purchasing street drugs. So if you're doing street drugs, I'm telling you right now, you better stop it. Because there's some stuff right now that's going on with these street drugs that's taking people out of here. Okay? This particular street drug messed with his heart. Messed with his heart so bad that when he was hospitalized, I found out he was in the hospital. Went into the hospital. As a nurse who worked on the floor with patients for over 25 years, I know death when I walk into the room. I can feel the presence of death when I walk in the room. When I walked into the room, it was demons all around him. I felt death. It was not a glorious thing. It was the presence of God was like nowhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
my spirit was alarmed because I knew if he did not surrender his heart and give his heart to the Lord, that man was going to die and he was going to spend eternity in hell. God had already told me his time is up. He had given him enough time to accept him. I said, oh, Lord, please, God, please don't let him die and spend eternity in hell, tortured forever. God, please, please give him enough time. So, you know, I'm panicking. I'm in the hospital room talking to my neighbor, and I'm like, hey, you need to give your heart to the Lord. Please give your heart to the Lord. You know, I, I'm I'm like coming like that. Like, like there, there, there is a sense of urgency here. And he saw my expression. He saw my uh my urgency. He saw how I was acting. And he knew me pretty well, okay? And he went ahead to to please me. He went ahead and said the sinner's prayer. Y'all, I was just whoo. Oh my God, I was so relieved that he he asked Jesus in his heart. I was like, okay, thank you, God. I'm like, well, whatever happened now, God, who, if he leave here, God, at least I know he going to be with you. Y'all, I went home. Not too many days later, I, I received a phone call from one of my neighbors that this neighbor had passed away. So... I was talking to God in my mind. I didn't say it out loud. I was just talking to God in my mind. I was saying a prayer to God in my mind. And I said to him, I said, God, it's a great thing that so-and-so don't have to worry about anything anymore. He's now in your presence. He ain't got to worry about these, this, this stuff on this life anymore. Y'all, when I said that to God, Gosh, he immediately showed me hell. He showed me flames of fire. And he let me know my neighbor didn't make it in. He said, you got to believe in your heart. You got to confess and believe in your heart. You can't just confess Jesus as Lord. You got to confess and believe. Like, you can't have no doubt. You got to believe that Jesus is the son of God. God told me he didn't believe that. Not a diddly thing he said, and he just did that to please me, to calm me down. And that man was is burning in hell for eternity. And you know, I can't, I can't take it. I, I can't take knowing that somebody's going to live in eternity and die and, and, and burn forever. And be tortured forever. And God had to tell me. He said let the dead bury the dead. You can't make nobody accept me Lois. But you know my heart. Is filled with compassion for humanity. I don't want nobody to die. I don't want nobody to spend eternity in hell. And I know that's where people are going to go if they, ex they, re they reject Christ. And I know the believers in Christ Jesus who accepted the Lord and filled with the Holy Ghost and live in foul. If they die and they sin, they're not going to make it in. And that hurts my spirit, especially if I'm close to somebody and I do everything in my power to, to witness the Lord Jesus to the lost and people still reject the Lord. And then they end up burning in hell for eternity. So, you know, when God said, let the dead bury the dead, I had to like turn off all my emotions. And I learned how to do that. In, in nursing because there as a nurse when you're working with humanity you, you you see a little bit of everything and to help people you have to like cut your emotion you have to turn them off 
Because if you don't turn it off, you won't be any good to help. So I had to turn off my emotions so that I can go reach and try to help the next person. And I and I can't even go back and 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 think about the uh the, the, the torture and, and and the excruciating pain and in the suffering that people are going through because they reject the Lord Jesus. I can't I can't think about it. And the only reason why I'm talking about it now because God is leading me. I happened to see someone recently on television and you know who the person is, but I'm not going to call their name. It was a female actress who had a horrible car crash and she lived an alternative lifestyle. And I knew if she died in her sins in the hospital, she wasn't going to make it in. So, you know, I immediately start praying. I said, God, please, please, God, help her uh, to uh, accept you. Help her to receive you. And once again, God said, I gave her plenty of time to receive me. I give, I give people time, Lois, to receive me. And then after their time runs up and out, there's nothing that God can do. I mean, you have a certain amount of time to give your heart to the Lord. Whether you believe hell is real or not, whether you believe heaven is real or not. If you do not give your heart to the Lord Jesus, if you don't believe the son of the living God died on the cross for your sins, if you don't believe anything about the miraculous birth of how Jesus even came to the earth, you are in trouble. You're in trouble. And when you leave this when you leave this earth, when your soul leaves your body, there's only two places you're going to go. If you practice walking up right before the Lord, repent for your sins and ask the Holy Ghost to help you live right, and you practice living holy before the Lord, you're going to make it in. But if you reject Christ and you live a foul lifestyle opposite of what the Bible tells you, you're going to die. And you're going to spend eternity in hell. I can't get no clearer than that. And also to uh, Evangelist Simone Hall, the woman of God I told you about with the gold crosses in her teeth. She talked about a time where um, she, she, her spirit went to hell. She didn't do anything wrong, but God took her there to show her how real hell was. And she said she saw former classmates that she went to school with, high school with, down there burning in hell, burning for eternity, suffering, where the suffering never stops. The thirst is never quenched. The flames continue to burn forever. Get that through your, your mind. Forever. Forever. So, yeah, uh, that kind of stuff bothers me, but I've learned to turn my emotions off and just help who I can help. Witness to who I can witness to. Tell people the truth. Y'all can play games with this if y'all want. Y'all gonna be in trouble. If y'all don't get your hind parts right and do what God said to do in that Bible and practice not fornicating, practice not adultery, practice not lying, practice not doing people harm, practice walking in the fruit of the spirit, practice walking in forgiveness. And by the way, when you forgive people, you don't remind them of their sin. 
If you really forgive people, you don't remind them of their sin. Everybody has sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's no such thing as a perfect person on this earth. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We practice walking upright before the Lord. That means you ask God to help you be the, uh, a person um, of honor and integrity. You ask God to help you walk right. You ask God to help you live holy. You ask God and you do everything in your power to do right and be good to people and to love people where they are. Help people grow. If you know somebody lived in sin and now God has delivered them and brought them out, don't point fingers at them. Help them grow. Love them. Don't remind them of their sin. Only Satan does stuff like that. You don't remind people what they did. If God forgave people their sins, so should you. Okay? So, yeah, I'm trying to tell y'all, this thing ain't nothing to play with. I saw the flames burning. God has shown me hell a couple times in a vision. He showed me, and I'll be praying for people. All the Christians, every, every Christian should be asking God every day. That should be your daily prayer. God, save people filling with the Holy Ghost. You ain't even got to name no names. God knows who's not saved. He knows who's not filled with the Holy Ghost. You're supposed to just be praying general prayers every day. If you understand why God got you on this earth and what you're supposed to be doing for the kingdom of Christ every day, you should be saying, Father, fill the unsaved people. Save people that's not the, who don't know you and fill them with the precious Holy Ghost and help them to walk upright before you. you. That should be coming out your mouth every day. If you're not saying that prayer every day, something wrong. Something wrong with your walk with the Lord. That's just, that. that's uh, elementary stuff you're supposed to be doing every day. Praying for salvation, world salvation, okay? And um, yeah, I felt led to talk about this topic here. This salvation thing ain't nothing to play with. I'm going to share another uh, story with you. I remember when I was married, I was in the kitchen. I was cooking dinner for my family. I was focused on my family and God dropped an emergency message in my spirit and told me to stop what I was doing, go across the street and witness salvation to uh, a young uh, woman and who just uh, moved into a house across the street, catty corner from me. Y'all, I didn't know these people. I didn't know these people, but I cut off my dinner. I cut the dinner off. They not going to starve. They, my family had food. I get back to that. And I went and did what God said to do. God was like, salvation is more important than you cooking dinner for your family. Please go over there. I said, yes, sir. So I told my family I'll be back. Went across the street, introduced myself, and then invited them to church. The the young one of the young women said she was not interested um in coming to church or anything like that, but she was it was nice to meet me and all that kind of stuff. So I said, okay. Went home, finished preparing my dinner. A couple of days later, I found out that same young woman was in the hospital. I was like, wow, I didn't know she was sick. Cause I can only see what God showed me. If God don't show me something, I can't see it. Okay, she looked like she was okay from the outside, but you know, unless God revealed it to me, I don't know. I found out why she was in the hospital. Okay, and then I said, Wow, okay. So I went back, you know, I did my normal taking care of my family stuff. She came back from the hospital. Um, I'm in the kitchen again, cooking dinner for my family. God said, Turn that food off. I want you to go back across the street, witness the name of Jesus to that young woman again. I said, okay, God. Went right back across the street, witnessed the name of the Lord Jesus. They let me in the house. I said, hey, you know, I've been praying for you. Didn't know you were sick in the hospital. Listen, I know you can't go to the uh, church with me. I said, but I want to invite you to accept the Lord Jesus in your house. I said, you know, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus, 
Now will be a great time. You know, Jesus is a healer. You know, I'm talking like that, y'all. This young woman politely said to me, I'm not ex interested in accepting Jesus. And, um, but thank you so much for praying for me. But, 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 but I said, okay, I, y'all, I was just obeying the Lord. Okay. I took my hind parts home a couple days later. Next thing I know that lady is in the hospital. Y'all, whenever my neighbors are in the hospital, I like to go pray for them. I went to go pray for her. I was like, God, please, please don't let this lady die. She's so young, God. She's so, she's so young, God. Don't let her die. Y'all, she was dead like three or four days later. I felt, again, that sadness come in my heart because I knew she rejected. I knew she rejected Christ. She rejected Christ to my face. And so uh, God said, let the dead bury the dead. There I go again. I had to, and this was before I became a nurse. I had to turn off all of my emotions and get myself together knowing that some soul is in Hades right now suffering for eternity for the rest of her life. Because that's God's business. That's his business. I can't make nobody accept Jesus. All I can do is share Jesus with people. It's up to them. If they want to believe and accept him. So yeah. Those are the two stories that came in my heart to share with people. Now I know we live in a time where everybody wants to be accepted. Of course you're supposed to love everybody. You're supposed to love everybody no matter who they believe and what they believe. But you also, if you're a Christian, you have a responsibility to tell one people the truth about the Lord Jesus. You got to tell people the truth about the Lord Jesus. Whether they want to hear it or not, at least you told them. You know, at the end, it's going to be a whole bunch of people who kept asking the world to accept them the way they are. And when they die, they're going to be accepted all right, right into Hades burning for eternity and they gonna wish they didn't take that stance okay they're gonna wish they didn't take that stance so i'm telling you right now and i don't care what the stance is you could be a drunkard you could be um into sexual sin you could be a liar you could be whatever you're gonna wish you didn't take that stance because if you're crooked and you're living foul opposite the word of the living God not gonna make it in you're not gonna make it in and not a lot of preachers will tell you the truth now they because they crooked too you got some good men and women of God out there who's still preaching holiness and righteousness and they still telling people the truth but they so few you got a lot of them, they won't say a word. They won't tell the truth because they fearful their money won't come into their ministry. My ministry don't run on your money. Okay? My ministry don't run on your money. I get up and work every day as a nurse administrator. I made sure my ministry was set up to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. To keep my heart right and pure before the Lord. I am going to tell you the truth. God loves you. He loves you how you are right now. He accepts you how you are. But he wants you to accept the Lord Jesus. He wants you to get filled with the precious Holy Ghost. He wants you to turn your back on sin. And he wants you to do it with his help. Because you can't turn your back on sin all by yourself. You need the precious Holy Ghost and some tools to do it. I share some tools about how to keep your flesh under control through fasting and prayer. Okay? I gave everybody the tools they need so that nobody had no excuse for not 
uh, having the ability to walk up right before the Lord. You can do it if you want to do it. So you got choices here. You got the choice to uh, sit there and not believe the scriptures and believe what the world is telling you. And then when your soul depart from your body, you enter hell for eternity, but you live your life your way, but you're living in torture for eternity, or you have a choice to accept the Lord Jesus, practice walking upright before him according to the B-I-B-L-E Bible, using the tools to walk upright with God that I share with you on my ministry platform. And then when, you're so, when it's time for you to go home and be with the Lord, your soul will leave your body and enter in to, to heaven where it's such a beautiful place as described in the Bible. I told you I've already seen it. It's real. And you'll be able to spend eternity with your father in love and peace. Yeah, I got choices. Um, I know I'm probably one of the very few who gonna get up here and tell y'all the truth. And I'm telling you the truth in love. I love everybody. I love everybody where they are. I love you where you are. But I, got, I have a responsibility to tell you the truth. If I don't tell you the truth, I'm going to have blood on my hands. And God put this message in my spirit. And I knew I had to do this message today on Sunday. You know, uh, today was the day to do the message. So, this is prophetess, Nurse Lois. Coming to you from the Lord's Banks ministry, doing kingdom business. God loves you. He does. He loves you. But he wants you to accept his son. He wants you to be filled with the precious Holy Ghost. He wants you to turn your back on sin. And line up to the scriptures in the Bible. He wants you to ask for help. To walk right, to live right before, before him, and to practice walking upright every day so you can make it in. God, he's watching us. He's watching to see what kind of decisions we make every day when we wake up. He's watching. He's watching. I don't care what you think you're doing in secret. He's still, he's watching you and keeping note. They know God knows exactly what you're doing. You might be fooling people, but you can never fool God. So this is Nurse Lois coming to you from the Lois Banks ministry. I love you with the love of the Lord. I want everybody to make it into heaven. I do. I pray you uh, receive this message with love. And I pray you make some decisions to walk, to accept the Lord Jesus and to walk up right before him. So if you have never asked Jesus into your heart, now is the time to do so. Jesus is the son of God. He was born of a virgin named Mary. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary, planted the seed of Jesus in Mary's womb, and she became pregnant miraculously. Mary gave birth to baby Jesus. Jesus grew up in the earth underneath the protection of his stepfather, Joseph. Jesus learned carpeting, car carpenter skills, skills like Joseph. And then Jesus moved. When he became a, a grown man, he went into full-time ministry on the earth to do the work of his father. Jesus was nailed to the cross. He died for all of our sins all the curses of the world, okay? 
he died so that we can be reconciled back to the Father. Jesus is the Son of God. And on the third day after Jesus died, after Jesus gave up the Holy Ghost and he died, uh, Jesus was raised on the third day. Jesus is alive and well. So that is the plan of salvation. And if you want to receive the Lord Jesus in your heart, all you have to do is repeat after me. But you got to repeat it and you got to believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. You can't just repeat it. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So I'm getting ready to lead you. For all those who do who never asked Jesus in your heart, just say, Lord Jesus, Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me from all of my sins. I turn my back from unrighteousness. I turn my back from drunkenness, lying, adultery, fornication, all sexual sins. Everything that's in the Bible that you said not to do, I turn my back on it. I'm going to get in my Bible and I'm going to read it. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Fill me with your precious Holy Ghost, which is your power. Help me to walk upright before you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of Christ. I want you to... Um, order a Bible. Go on, go to Amazon. Order you a Bible. Start off with the NIV Bible. Don't get the King James Bible at first because sometimes people don't understand the these and the vows. But get the NIV Bible and start reading from Genesis. Read a chapter of the Bible a day. And then read uh, from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. Start spending time reading the Bible, getting to know your Heavenly Father. He knows all about you. Your hair on your head is all numbered. He knows how many strands is on your head. He has a special work for you to do. And he's going to help you live right before him, okay? Uh, this is Nurse Prophetess Nurse Lois coming to you from the Lowest Banks of Ministry. Um, if you accepted uh, this prayer of salvation, I want you to send me a personal email so that I can add you to my prayer list because you're going to need prayer. Anytime you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you come over to the kingdom of Christ side, hey, you're going to need prayer. You could uh, email me at contact at nurse Lois, L O I S dot com. Let me know you said this prayer, prayer of salvation, okay, where you accepted the Lord Jesus in your heart. And um, I'm going to be praying for you, checking up on you, making sure you're okay, and you know. I share a lot of information on my ministry platform of the importance of reading the Bible every day, praying, and talking to God every day, practicing, walking upright before God every day. Because you got to practice. You know, practice makes perfect. You're not going to ever be a perfect human being, but you'll get better. You'll master walking with the Lord. You'll master it. Okay, so this is Prophetess Nurse Lois coming to you from the Lois Banks Ministry. God bless you.